Good morning and welcome to People's Church. Uh, this morning there's an article in the New York Times that talks about how we've been missing the collective effervescence that comes from being together and singing together and activities like that. But the next best thing is being together on Zoom. My name is Sabelle Shattuck. 
and I am a member of the Sunday Services Committee. It is my privilege to welcome you to People's Church this morning. People's Church is a member of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and we are part of a liberal tradition that affirms the importance of a continual quest for knowledge, learning to live in right relationship with human and other than human communities. And we seek knowledge in many places, not only in the world's religions, but also in art, in science, and in nature. We also believe in the importance of being a community of seekers where we recognize that we learn and grow when we share our insights and experiences with each other because each member of our community is also a source of knowledge and wisdom. And one of the times of the year when we really take advantage of that aspect of our tradition is during the summer. So during the summer, our program at People's Church is less formal than it is during the Sunday services and the rest of the year. Because this time of year, we take a theme and we invite members of the community, both members of our, our church family and also people from our wider community to come and share their insights. Uh, this summer, our theme is the past, present and future of hope. And today, our reflection will come from Julia Kirkwood, who is a longtime member of People's Church. Um, many of you, when you think of her, probably associate her with Jeff Kirkwood and the Peace and Nature Camp and the wonderful children, Maya and Samuel, who they, they've raised in this church. Um, but outside of People's Church, Julia is a, um, a person who works hard to develop those right relationships with the natural world here in Michigan. She works for the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, um, where she specializes in protection of inland lakes. And she works closely with property owners and communities to encourage care of shorelines in ways that prevent damage to the waters that are so essential to our Michigan ecosystems. So um, in our service today, Julia will be giving a reflection titled, Choose to Live a Life That Matters. And after her reflection, we will take advantage of Zoom technology and have little breakout rooms where in small groups we can um, reflect on the thoughts that are inspired by her talk and some of the ideas that we'd like to take from it in our own lives. So normally at this point, we would all sing a communal song, but um, Savannah can't be with us right now. So, um, we're gonna go straight to chalice lighting. And feel free to put in the chat, the area where you may be lighting a chalice in our wider community today. Uh, our chalice lighting words come from Julianne Lepp. We seek our place in the world and the answers to our heart's deep questions. As we seek, may our hearts be open to unexpected answers. May the light of our chalice remind us that this is a community of warmth and wisdom and welcoming of multiple truths. You know, the Zoom chalice lighting is actually one of my favorite features of our, our Zoom virtual church services because it's so neat to see where everybody is and all the people who are, are participating. And of course, every once in a while, we get somebody who's on vacation or a relative is Zooming in from some other part of the country. And it, it's just a delight to see the, the expansion of our community, even though, of course, um, Many of our, our hearts are at our church building here in Southwest Michigan. And as a community of people near and far, 
Um, one of the things that we do to build and strengthen and support this community is to take time to share what's going on in our lives, um, to share our joys so that we can celebrate with each other and also our so sorrows so that we can support each other. And you know, Jill McAllister always used to emphasize the brevity of this, but Zoom has taught us all <laughs> this knack for brevity. Um, and it's, it's so wonderful that even through our distance, we're able to share by um, putting some words in the chat to tell people about a joy or sorrow, or even just to ask, to say simply a stone um, that you don't wish to share the details, but you want people to know that you should be kept in their thoughts. So at this time, please feel free to share your joys and sorrows with the community by typing in the chat feature, and I will read aloud um, the joys and sorrows that you share, and I will pause the recording so that that part of our service does not get shared on the internet when we post this to our YouTube page. People's Church community is a generous community. People have stepped up to continue providing the support to maintain our church facilities and our staff, even in the midst of these challenging times. Um, one example, we had a work day on the church grounds last week, and it was a joyous occasion to be weeding together um, in person, outdoors, on our home grounds once again, and to see how well the building has been maintained through this time. And we also, uh, of course, are looking forward to the time when we'll all get back there together. So at this time, we have our virtual collection of the offering, and um, the link is posted in the chat, which you can use. And we will take a few minutes to watch a video with some more wonderful music.
please join me in expressing gratitude for the generosity of our community members using the words that are posted in the chat. From the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance, we bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. Now I should make a note before Julia begins. Um, we have a special song. It is a wonderful thing in a family when a mother can say, I'm giving a talk on this subject and her daughter says, I'll write a song for that. So today we have a, a new creation um, by Maya Kirkwood to go with today's reflection. Is it the song or the poem right now? Sorry. Either one first. Ready or not, someday it will all come to an end. There will be no more sunrises, no minutes, hours, or days. All the things you collected, whether treasured or forgotten, will pass to someone else. Your wealth, fame, and temporal power will shrivel to irrelevance. It will not matter what you owned or what you were owed. Your grudges, resentments, frustrations, and jealousies will finally disappear. So too, your hopes, ambitions, plans, and to-do lists will expire. The wins and losses that once seemed so important will fade away. It won't matter where you came from or what side of the tracks you lived on at the end. It won't matter whether you were beautiful or brilliant. Even your gender and skin color will be irrelevant. So what will matter? How will the value of your days be measured? What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gave. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is not what you learned, but what you taught. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others to emulate your example. What will matter is not your competence, but your character. What will matter is not how many people you knew, but how many will feel a lasting loss when you're gone. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories of those who loved you. What will matter is how long you will be remembered, by whom and for what. Living a life that matters doesn't happen by accident. It's not a matter of circumstance, but of choice. Choose to live a life that matters. So Val, do you want me to just go right into, okay. All right, fabulous. All right, good morning, everyone. And I sincerely appreciate Maya doing that lovely reading for, for the service. Um, now, after I had committed to doing a Sunday service, I spent quite a lot of time thinking about a topic that would be meaningful as well as something that was different than the topic of my daily work, which is, um, as Sabelle noted, uh, the environment. I would have, oh, just a note I saw in the um, chat room or chat that um, the poem that Maya read is, was a poem that was written by, I forget the guy's name, is Michael, if you can, Michael Josephin. And I'll mention this in a little bit. Um, but, you know, and I would have glimpses of ideas that would jumble around and not really form into anything. So I would quickly discard like everything I came up with until my daughter's graduation ceremony, which was on a lovely June sunny evening, sitting in the football stadium 33 years after my own high school graduation. And during the ceremony, my mind would wander back and forth to that day. And I could see like all 500 of us sitting there in a mix of excitement and nervousness for what lay ahead, just as I suspect each of those kids sitting on the field in front of me were feeling as well. 
And when her principal read that poem, What Will Matter, during the ceremony, I felt myself become more intent on listening, especially to these words. Now, I thought to myself that these words were great guideposts for the new graduates and really just generally for anyone. And I hope that some of the students really heard the words of the poem and took them to heart. And while I don't remember exactly what was said during my own graduation ceremony, I do know that it was inspirational too. And as the poem went on, I felt myself becoming more intentional and focused on this. And if anybody has ever like seen a dog or, or worked with horses at all, you know, like, you know that they're listening, but then all of a sudden, they'll see something or they'll hear something specific and it attracts their attention. And then you just see their entire body just become focused and listening and intense. And so when I heard the culminating words, choose to live a life that matters, I felt those power in the words. And that's how I felt was I just, everything about me just became focused. And at that moment, I reflected on my life and what I've done since my graduation and thought, oh my gosh, like this was like this huge epiphany, I did it. Like I have lived a life that matters. And I still remember the day in high school and where I was when I made a conscious choice. I didn't have a clear vision of what I wanted to do or who I wanted to be. I just knew that I wanted to do good in the world. I wanted to help make a world a better place. And the road has had many twists and turns and there were many times I just wanted to give up and find an easier path. But somehow I eventually remembered my promise to myself to not sell myself out, to stay true to what matters to me and to make a positive difference in the world. I thought about this more. And before I left that stadium, I knew that this was my topic for today's service, that it would be centered around choosing a life that matters. The poem brings in many different facets of life where we all struggle along the way. Money, power, ambitions, emotions, things. And there is so much within each of these that they each could use their own sermon and discussion time. But what I wanted to focus on is the question is, how will your day be measured? One, because I feel like I can honestly say that I have lived a life that matters, but how do I really know that? How does one measure it? In order for one to measure something, there needs to be some standard to measure it against so there can be some determination of how one is even doing. And then another reason I wanted to choose this topic is because of the overlap of a conversation that I've been having with myself really for the past few years. I've been mulling this, like, these concepts over and, and I've been thinking deeply about the concept of being passionate about something, staying the course and dive deep into what you believe. And I was finding a huge paradox in this because we're often asked the question when we are seeking, when we are just starting out seeking, especially as like a new graduate, what do you feel passionate about? And then we're given the advice, well, find that cause you truly care about and embrace it. So I see many people that are incredibly passionate about what they believe. They focus their efforts on creating certain outcomes and work really hard at what they and others are trying to accomplish. And they live their lives true to this. I believe if asked, they would feel that they are living a life that matters. But what if, but what if a person considers what truly matters to them meets the criteria of being passionate and committed and full of courage and sacrifice. And by some people's standards are achieving great things at both a large and small scale. And yet all of what they are doing also brings harm to people. Though in their minds they're being righteous or justify their actions for what they see as necessary to achieve that outcome. These ideas and actions matter to them but is this truly living a life that matters? For many people, they would say they are living a life that matters, but by many standards, they have devoted their lives to actions that are creating discourse, spreading lies and hate, and in general, hurting people and the environment. 
So how does one support and honor the fact that they believe they are truly making choices to live a life that matters and yet not judge them by saying they are not by our own standards? By what measurement? Again, how does one measure if you are living a life that matters rather than just doing something that matters to you? Especially because we're all individuals. And the answer for each of us tends to be based on the values we as individuals hold most sacred. Well, let's look at character, which is one of the um, facets within the poem. If we say a person who is living a life that matters has good character, then we need to look at what character it is, which is the kind of person who has qualities like integrity and courage and persistence. And then we would need to live a life and in a way that is consistent with who we are and what we value. And again, what if a person embodies all of these qualities of good character and they do live a consistent life with who they are and what they value, except what they are doing ostracizes, shames, controls, and even in the end kills as part of what they are passionate about. So these ideals matter to them. But I ask again, is this person truly living a life that matters? One of the criteria in the poem is, what will matter is how long you will be remembered by whom and for what. If we consider this criteria of a measure for what will matter, there are many people that spread hate and are remembered long and revered by many. Do we want to be okay with saying that these people embody other people that are living lives that matter to allow for the individuality of each of us? If not, then how do we say no to that without also condemning them for the fact that they were following the advice so many of us have heard? Follow your heart, find that cause to get involved with, do something you love. I don't know the full answer to these questions, but if we buy into the theory that there are no universal metrics and that we each need to make criteria for ourselves because we're all different, then I think we fall short of helping people grow in their lives in ways that are intended to do good in this world. So I say there are criteria that can be used by everyone. Many philosophers such as Socrates and Plato provide ideals to measure against, but not really that many people read their works anymore. And religions provide a guide as well, but there are so many interpretations and many are ones that seek to divide and hurt. I say we just keep it simple. But first, we just need to agree that living a life that matters is congruent with bringing more light into this world. And then the questions to ask yourself, are my words, actions, and thoughts intended to bring more kindness, love, compassion, and smiles into this world? Are they intended to heal? Is there honesty? Or are my intentions based in anger and fear? Do they seek to control others to be similar? Then the next part is at the end of the day, ask yourself, did I do what I intended to do? Did I bring more smiles into this world? Was I honest? Even in the most simplest of things, for example, you know, Sabelle noted that I work for the state of Michigan and we're allowed to use state, you know, state cars and uh, bring them home occasionally. And, and I brought one home on many occasions because of where I was headed the next day. So occasionally Jeff would call me and ask if I could stop at the grocery store on the way home just to get a few things he couldn't get at the local store. Um, would this make, would this stop be easy? Sure. Would it help make our lives easier, especially since the store is essentially 20 minutes away? Sure. But since we are not allowed to use state cars for personal use, would it be honest? No. So I would say no. I, I'd say I had a state car. I can't stop. So take these questions and apply these questions to all aspects of your life. If there are more no's than yeses, 
then how does one become more correct congruent with what your intentions are? Choice. Every day, we have countless opportunities for choices. And if you can say yes on more days than not, then I say you are living a life that matters. Thank you. So we'll now take some time using the magic of Zoom breakout rooms um, to discuss some of these ideas and some questions to think about for um, guiding our discussion. First of all, are there specific people that you think of as role models for how to live lives that matter? And why do you feel that they're living lives that matter? What are some specifics about them that, that make them those role models? Um, second, what do you think are characteristics or measurements for a life that matters? And finally, um, what advice would you give your younger self about how to choose a life that matters? So now Chris is going to do AV magic for us. So it looks um, like Julia has found the full recording of Maya's song. So that will be our closing song, which she's going to play now. Go any louder? No. Yeah, I'm not getting sound.
As we leave this virtual space today, may we find ways to engage in acts of integrity, compassion, and courage that enrich, empower, and encourage others. May we be like Julia and Maya who demonstrated resilience today in dealing with technology. May we build memories with people we love. May we make the universe smile. May we choose to live a life that matters. Go in peace. And if you'd like to stay for virtual coffee hour, um, we'll have a few minutes for breakout rooms to just chat about anything and say hi to our friends. <laughs>